What's going on guys? For the last six years, I've been traveling across the United States, road tripping, hiking, and just making my way through some of the best places that this country has to offer. So I compiled my top 50 hikes in the United States. This is going to be an awesome hiking bucket list and an amazing travel guide. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's jump right in. First up is gonna be Devil's Bathtub. And this is located in Virginia. It is a 7.3 mile hiking loop with 1,614 feet of elevation gain, and it has 13 river crossings, so it is a very fun and adventurous hike. If you only go to Devil's Bathtub, it's around 3.9 miles with 500 feet of elevation gain. And just a note on this place, there have been a lot of search and rescues here, so please plan accordingly. Do not start in the afternoon. Start extra early and have downloaded offline maps so you can get there safely and get out of there without needing a search and rescue. And honestly, this is my favorite place on the East Coast, and the hike is beautiful. It's an awesome hidden gem in Virginia. Next up, number two is gonna be Crowley Lake Stone Columns. And this is in California near Mammoth Lakes, kind of in the geothermal region of the state. And this is only a quarter mile hike if you have a very serious four x four truck with high clearance. Otherwise, it's 4.2 miles round trip with 515 feet of elevation gain. Bree and I sadly had to park our van and hike our way up. Other than that though, it's an easy hike. You're just hiking on road. And the rocks are so cool because it seems like really awesome man-made architecture but it is just a natural feature on the lake makes it really really interesting and i also like that when we were driving past this lake to be honest nothing kind of stood out it was beautiful there was mountains way in the distance but the stone columns really make this a special place Next up is number three, and this is gonna be Seneca Rocks in West Virginia. This is a 3.6 mile trail with 839 feet of elevation gain, and it takes you right to the ridge line. If you're not a rock climber, you don't need to worry because you can take a hiking trail right up to the ridge line, and then you can go out for about 20 to 30 feet based on your comfort zone until it gets a little bit too much to do without rock climbing equipment. The rock is unbelievable. It's just like a sharp fin. From the distance, it looks like a big mountain, but from the side angle, it is just like a knife's edge. It is such a cool rock formation. Next up, number four, we're gonna be going to Grand Teton National Park. And this hike is going to be to Delta Lake, 7.2 miles round trip with 2,240 feet of elevation gain. It's definitely a big day of a hike, but it's probably my favorite lake in the Tetons. It is so beautiful and I definitely recommend getting up there for sunrise. The water is a very cool turquoise color and you are right under Grand Teton Mountain. And just really quick, I want to just make a quick note to everyone using this list as a hiking guide or a travel bucket list for the US. Please plan accordingly, download offline maps always, make sure you're prepared, you have water, someone knows where you are, and just make sure that you're being safe because things can happen in the backcountry that you never know about. So I just wanted to say that really quick. And next up, number five, is going to be Big Pine Lakes. And this entire trail is 15.2 miles with 3,982 feet of elevation gain. There's seven lakes, but if you just go to kind of the famous lake, that one is called Second Lake. And just to that one, it is 9.9 .9 miles round trip with around 3,500 feet of elevation gain. So if you don't wanna do the whole 15 miles, this is a great alternative and you're gonna to get to the most scenic spot of the Big Pine Lakes, so highly recommend this one. Next up is going to be Fire Wave in Valley of Fire State Park, just outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. I recommend going via Pink Canyon. This is the Seven Wonders Trail, and this would be 0.8 miles with 49 feet of elevation gain. This is not the standard trail. This is where you kind of park and just go through the Pink Canyon, but it is an amazing way to get here, and it is much more scenic than the already scenic standard trail. Next up, number seven is Beehive and Precipice Trail. And this is kind of the highlight of Acadia National Park in Maine. It's one of my favorite spots in New England. 
And if you would like to link kind of all of the most popular hikes, you can do the Beehive and the Precipice Trail in one hike, and you also get to go to the Bowl, Champlain South Ridge, and a few other spots. So you're kind of getting to see the best of Acadia in this hike. And if you do all of that, it's 5.5 miles round trip with 2,171 feet of elevation gain. It is a point to point. So if you do this hike, you're gonna get back to the road. It was super easy. You can just walk the road, get a ride from a friend, or if you have two cars, park one at each trailhead. One for precipice and one for the beehive. Next up at number eight is gonna be Cathedral Rock, and this is in Sedona, Arizona. It is a 1.2 mile round trip hike with 741 feet of elevation gain. Uh, I would definitely recommend wearing some grippy shoes because there are gonna be some steep parts on the sandstone. It's really fun, actually, and you can do some scrambling because it's kind of just one big rock that you go up rather than like a super defined single track trail. And this is awesome. This is probably one of the most famous spots in Sedona and for good reason, it's amazing. We had the coolest sunset ever here. It's a great place for photography and just a great place to hang out. Next up, number nine is gonna be Cascade Pass in the Sahali Arm. And this is in North Cascade National Park in Washington State. This is 12.1 miles round trip with 5,029 feet of elevation gain. This is a big day. That's all the way to the top of Sahali Mountain. If you want to just go to Sahali Arm, which is what we did, it's around nine miles round trip with roughly 3,000 feet of elevation gain. The entire hike is so scenic. It is very beautiful. We woke up and we did not have the best conditions. We were kind of just engulfed in the clouds, but we hung out there into the afternoon and the clouds kind of dissipated, so we had amazing views of the lake and the mountains around us. So this is an awesome one in Washington State. Next up, number 10 is Canaraville Falls. This is six miles round trip with 1,017 feet of elevation gain if you do the entire thing. You do need water shoes unless you want to get your shoes wet uh, and potentially ruin them. There are gonna be two ladders on this where you're gonna practically climb up a waterfall. They're both really scenic and awesome. So you can go to one, you can do go both. You're gonna be hiking through slot canyons. It's a very fun and unique hike. Now you do need a permit for this hike. So that's gonna be at canarafalls.com and it's just $12 a person, but you do have to plan ahead for this one. So just make sure to keep that in mind. Next up at number 11 is Cummins Falls. This is three miles round trip with 452 feet of elevation gain. Again, I'd probably recommend water shoes for this one. And for this, you do need a permit, so that's at tnstateparks.com. It's just $6 a person, but do need to plan ahead for this one. It's massive, there's so many layers to it. You're allowed to hike on all of the layers, which is super fun. It's a great place to go for a swim. It's one of my favorite waterfalls. If you're ever in Tennessee or the Great Smoky Mountains, definitely add this one as a little detour. Next up, number 12 is La Ventana Arch, and this is a 0.4 mile round trip hike with 45 feet of elevation gain. I believe that's just to the viewpoint and it doesn't include going up into the cave, but I definitely recommend that. That only adds probably like a tenth of a mile and you get to go right under the arch and really see how big this thing is. This is just such an unbelievable arch. I had no idea New Mexico had places like this. This is definitely my favorite spot in the entire state. And if you're able to, I would definitely recommend going for sunset because the sun just lights up the arch in the cave and it is just beautiful. Next up, number 13 is gonna be North Caneville Mesa, and this is 1.8 mile round trip hike with 1,100 feet of elevation gain. This is the coolest desert summit I've ever done in my life. This is located in central Utah, and northern Utah is kind of where the mountains of Utah are, but this is just an awesome summit if you like peak bagging and it's in the desert and it overlooks the craziest patterns ever. Definitely one of my all time favorite hikes in Utah. It is a class three climb at points and parts of the trail are very loose rock and scree, so be careful. And if you aren't comfortable with it, just turn around. You're gonna have awesome views the entire way anyways. 
Next up, number 14 is St. Mary's Glacier, and this is in Colorado, just about one hour west of Denver, down I-70. This is 2.4 miles round trip with 1,030 feet of elevation gain, but just to the base of the lake, it's much shorter and less elevation. That's kind of just if you climb up on the glacier. You can do this year round. We did it in the winter, and the lake and the lake was frozen, so we got to go walk out on that, and that was a lot of fun. And just a tip for this one, it is $5 for parking, cash only, so definitely come prepared with that. Next up, number 15 is the Enchantments, and in my opinion, this is the crown jewel of Washington State. It's probably the most famous point-to-point -point hike in the state. All Trail says it's 20.5 miles with 4,954 feet of gain. Bree and I clocked in about 23 miles when we did it. If you go the same way that we did, starting at Colchuck Lake and then going to Snow Lakes, just so you know, you're gonna be climbing around 5,000 feet, but you're gonna be descending 7,000 feet after you get up on top of Asgard Pass. So it's definitely a knee breaker. The two trailheads are about eight miles apart. It does make it a little bit stressful for logistics reasons, but there's a shuttle service in town for $25 a person that will take you back to your car. Number 16 is Valley of Dreams Loop. This is in northern New Mexico in Bisti Badlands and De Mazin Wilderness. This is 3.7 miles with 255 feet of elevation gain. Bree and I spent like a week hiking through this area of New Mexico and this was definitely our favorite trail and it had some of the most famous spots in the Badlands. So highly recommend this one among others if you're in New Mexico. Next up at 17 is Mount Fremont Fire Lookout in Mount Rainier National Park in Washington State. This is 5.7 miles with 1,118 feet of elevation gain. You're gonna be hiking around Mount Rainier the entire way, so you know you're gonna have awesome views for your entire hike. And then once you are up there, you're at one of their famous fire lookouts, which is honestly really cool. It's just in the middle of so many mountains. It's a great place to watch sunset. If you only had one day in Mount Rainier, this is the hike that I would recommend. Next up, Cox Canyon Arch in New Mexico. This is right across the border, of New Mexico and Colorado. It's just a 0.4 mile hike with 127 feet of elevation gain. It is pretty unmarked and we were the only people here for hours. So definitely download the All Trails map and follow it because it is a little bit tricky. To be honest, I had never heard of this, never seen it, but when we were driving to New Mexico from Colorado, I just had my Google Maps on and I saw a little camera emoji and it said Cox Canyon Arch and it was only five minutes off of the highway we were on. So of course we stopped and I'm really glad we did because it's a really, really cool spot. Next up is Bright Angel Trail in Grand Canyon National Park, Arizona. This is no joke of a hike. This on all trails says 15.3 miles with 4,478 feet of elevation gain. But when we did it, we were closer to 20 miles. And the weird part about this is that you hike down first. You hike down almost 5,000 feet of elevation to the Colorado River in the middle of the Grand Canyon, which is a crazy experience because the Grand Canyon is so vast and to go all the way down and be at a white sand beach is pretty crazy but that also makes it for a super tough return hike to the car because after you have done eight to ten miles you have to hike up 
5,000 feet and do another eight to 10 miles. So it's a tough day, but it's very rewarding. And number 20 is Island Lake and Ice Lake via Ice Lake Basin. And this is in the San Juan Mountains of Colorado. Definitely like one of my top five hikes in Colorado and the lakes are unbelievable. It's like one of the few places in the whole state that has a super aqua turquoise lake and Island Lake is really awesome because it has this huge island in the middle just surrounded by 13,000 foot mountains and 14,000 foot mountains. It's an awesome hike that I'll just, it's an awesome hike. I'll just leave it at that. Next up is Nelson Rocks Via Ferrata in West Virginia. And this is kind of a mixture of a hike and a climb, but you don't actually need technical rock climbing knowledge or skills to do this. But it is on private property, so you do need to hire a guide. And it's 2.2 miles round trip with 1,062 feet of elevation gain. There's a crazy suspension bridge. It's really cool. It's similar to Seneca Rocks, and it's awesome that you get a climbing experience without needing to know how to climb. It costs between $80 and $125 per person. They also offer proper climbing tours and zip line tours, so it's an awesome spot for those that love adventure. Next up at 22 is Ozone Falls, and this is just 0.3 miles with 111 feet of elevation gain. I would personally recommend going to the top of the waterfall and the bottom. It's a really awesome swimming hole if it is a hot afternoon. And at the top, you can go all the way to the edge. Be careful, but you can do it, which makes it really cool. And then if you're down below, you're kind of in this just crazy cave and you can go behind the waterfall. And it's practically on the side of the road, which is really cool. This is definitely up there as one of my favorite Tennessee spots. And number 23 is Shoshone Falls, Idaho. And if you would like to go to the observation deck, it is 0.6 miles with 173 feet of gain. We didn't, we just go to the viewpoint at the parking lot. So it's 10 feet and maybe 10 stairs. So anyone can do this. It's wheelchair friendly. It's a great spot to take the family, great spot to take kids. It is a massive, massive waterfall. I believe it is called the Niagara Falls of the West. It is. One of my favorite spots in Idaho and definitely a really cool stop and a great way to see the Snake River. Next up at 24 is going to be the Decalibron and this is an awesome hike in Colorado if you're looking to climb a bunch of 14ers, which is essentially just mountains that stand over 14,000 feet. Colorado has 58 of them. And on this hike, you're gonna be summoning Democrat, Cameron, Lincoln, and Bross. It's a class two scramble. Bross is a little dicey because it's very loose rock, but anyone can do it. You know, just be careful, just come prepared. In my opinion, I would go clockwise and descend down Bross, but a bunch of people will say, different things. And this one is seven miles with 3,136 feet of elevation gain. Next up is Quandary Peak, and this is not too far from the Decalibron. It's one of the most accessible 14ers, which makes it an awesome hike year round. There's multiple routes and backcountry skiing. The standard hiking route is just 6.6 .6 miles with 3,326 feet of elevation gain, and this is just going up the east slopes, and it is a great first 14er for those that are trying to get into summiting bigger mountains like this. And Quandary Peak is just 10 minutes south of Breckenridge, Colorado, so it's only about an hour and a half from downtown Denver.
Next up at 26 is going to be the Narrows in Zion National Park, Utah. The closest big city to this is probably going to be Las Vegas, Nevada, but if you're road tripping Utah, you have to stop at this national park. For this hike, you can pretty much go as far as you'd like. You're going to have to take the shuttle to the start of the Narrows. You can do one mile, you can do five miles, or you can do the entire top-down way, which is 15.5 miles. It's scenic every single step of the way, so as far as you'd like, grab your water shoes and just go hang out. Definitely would keep an eye on weather because this is a very dangerous hike if it rains and poles are essential for this hike. So if you happen to hit a rock and fall, you can catch yourself. Number 27 is gonna be Grinnell Glacier and this is my favorite hike in Glacier National Park. This is an 11.2 mile round trip hike with 2,181 feet of elevation gain. You're definitely gonna need bear spray for this one. We have seen bears on this trail and I think it is very common for that. And between this, Cracker Lake and Iceberg Lake, this is definitely my favorite. They're all great, so if you have time, do them all. But if you only have time for one of these, I would highly recommend Grinnell Glacier. And this is on the mini glacier side of the park, not the Lake McDonald side. Number 28 is Panther Creek Falls, and this is in Washington State, but it's just outside of Portland, Oregon. On all trails, if you're searching for it, it is trail 137, because if you type in Panther Creek Falls, there's a bunch of things that pop up. It's just 0.3 miles with 121 feet of elevation gain. You pretty much park and just go right down to the waterfall. I love this one. This is a massive waterfall that, that is just cascading for as far as you can see. You're in the lush forest of Washington State in the Pacific Northwest and it's just a really awesome waterfall to hang out at and it's a really fun one to photograph. Number 29 is going to be Amethyst Lake and this is in the High Uintas Mountain Range in northern Utah. This is a big day hike. This is going to be 13 miles with 2,326 feet of elevation gain. I didn't really know that northern Utah or Utah in general really had mountains like this until a few years ago. So this is a really pleasant surprise and it's an awesome spot where you can avoid the crowds and it's just a great place to get out in the wilderness if you're near Salt Lake City. Number 30 is Angel's Landing, also in Zion National Park in Utah, and this is one that I would recommend to start extremely early so you can beat the crowds. There's crazy bottlenecks on the chains portion of this hike, so you could be waiting for a very long time. It's 4.4 miles round trip with 1,604 feet of elevation gain. To someone like me with a hiking, climbing, and scrambling background, I don't find this dangerous and I think the chains are relatively unnecessary, but I know that's not the case for everyone and if I was going to take, you know, an older family member or something like that, yes, it is definitely a hike for the adrenaline junkie. So just, just make sure everyone you're hiking with knows that ahead of time. Number 31 is going to be Antelope Canyon and this is specifically Antelope Canyon without a permit. So the standard... The standard upper and lower Antelope Canyon, you need permits for, it's on Navajo land. But for this, you can rent kayaks in downtown Page, Arizona, and then you can kayak to Antelope Canyon. You pretty much park your kayak, get out and hike, and you can go as far as you want in these insane slot canyons. And because it's not the famous kind of classic Antelope Canyons, it's one of those places that you don't really have any idea what to expect. It's just beautiful slot canyons. And it's awesome because you can rent the kayaks overnight. So we actually slept on Antelope Island and it was like the coolest two day desert adventure you could do. So if you have time, I'd recommend it. Number 32 is Corona Arch, and this is gonna be in Moab, Utah. And right next to Corona Arch is Bowtie Arch. This is 2.4 miles with 482 feet of elevation gain. 
It's just as cool as Delicate Arch, but you don't have to deal with any of the crowds of Delicate Arch. And it's actually not in the National Park, which is pretty cool. So it's kind of one of those like hidden arches of Moab. There's tons, but I really, really like this one. There is a little bit of kind of hiking with your hands on some of the areas with steep sandstone. So just be aware of that, but it's a really fun hike. Number 33 is High Dune Trail, and this is in Great Sand Dunes National Park in Southern Colorado. This is brutal. It's three miles round trip with 629 feet of elevation gain. To be honest, it's so miserable because you're doing this hiking and elevation gain on sand, which is like the hardest thing in the world. And not to mention you're in Colorado, so you are at high altitude and altitude is definitely something you need to be weary of. Bring lots of water and enjoy the fact that for the following few months, you're gonna be finding sand in your shoes and in all of your belongings. But otherwise it is beautiful and you are surrounded by 14,000 foot mountains. So it's, it's the most scenic sand dunes I've ever been to. Number 34 is Lake of the Crags in Grand Teton National Park, Wyoming. And this is the Hanging Canyon Trail from Jenny Lake. I didn't hear about this until I did it in 2020. Awesome, it's a super, super fun hike and an amazing, beautiful lake. And it's one of those places I had never seen photos of before. So I think it's one of the lesser known hikes in the park. But because of that, you gotta be prepared. There's gonna be tons of bushwhacking. So wear long pants and a long sleeve shirt. There's bears, we ran into one in the dark and on the hike down, so just be aware of that and have your bear spray. It's 6.1 miles with 2,811 feet of elevation gain, so it is a steep hike, but it is well worth the effort. Number 35 is Lone Pine Lake, and this is in Whitney Portal, California, just above the Alabama Hills. It's the only hike from Whitney Portal where you don't need a permit. It's a great hike for sunrise. You have some awesome alpine glow on the mountains and make sure you walk around the lake. So when you get there, it's awesome, but the best view is when you go around to the other side of the lake. This is 6.5 miles with 1,876 feet of elevation gain. It's an awesome hike in the Southern Sierras. Number 36 is Mesa Arch, and this is in Canyonlands National Park, Utah. This is amazing. This is such a cool arch. It is 0.7 miles and 88 feet of elevation gain. I'm gonna recommend that you go for sunrise, but I'm also gonna tell you that you are gonna be battling 10,000 photographers with their tripods taking the exact same photo. But for good reason, this arch, the way the sun hits it when it rises behind the La Salle Mountains is unbelievable and it makes the entire scene super dreamy super colorful and it's definitely an awesome spot in canyonlands number 37 is black lake and this is in rocky mountain national park colorado it is 9.7 miles with 1643 feet of elevation gain you also get to see mills lake and a waterfall on your way so it's a very scenic hike. Plaque Lake is so cool and you have behind it McHenry's Peak and the Arrowhead. So it's a really scenic spot. We, I've done this in the summer and in the winter. It's obviously way harder to get to in the winter, but if you are up for some post holing, it is a really fun hike. And otherwise it is just as beautiful in the summer. Number 38 is Sky Pond. This is also in Rocky Mountain National Park. And in my opinion, this is the coolest hike 
in the entire national park. I don't think this place gets enough credit because it's honestly one of the cooler spots in the entire state of Colorado. You're gonna be hiking past the lock and a waterfall as well. And you're gonna end up at Sky Pond, which is right under the shark's tooth. It is these crazy jagged peaks and it's just, unbelievable that it's even a real place. It is a 9.4 mile round trip hike with 1,758 feet of elevation gain. The altitude makes it a little bit tough for this hike, but it is so worth it. Number 39 is going to be Mount Olympus in Utah. And this is straight out of Salt Lake City. This was like an eight minute drive from my hotel. You park at the trailhead and then you just go straight up. It is 7.8 miles with 4,156 feet of elevation gain. It is a class three scramble at the end of it, so you have to be a little bit comfortable with climbing after the long hike approach. It is accessible year round. I actually did this in January, which I was pretty surprised about because of the lack of snow. So I had micro spikes and that was all I needed for this. I did it solo. It was an awesome day hike. Number 40 is Old Rag Mountain, and this is in Shenandoah National Park, Virginia. The full loop is 9.5 miles with 2,683 feet of elevation gain. Some very fun East Coast scrambling, which is something that is not too common, at least in my home state of Maryland. Old Rag Mountain Trailhead being two hours from my house is awesome. You get up in the Appalachian Mountains, you get to climb around on some rocks. It's an amazing place for sunrise, fall foliage, and some inversion clouds when it gets a little cooler in the late fall. Number 41 is Palouse Falls in Washington State. It's 1.4 miles with 209 feet of elevation gain. The very first vantage point is right next to the parking lot, but you can kind of hike all around it. They kind of change the fences year over year. I've been here a few times. So, you know, walk along all of the provided trails, but you can walk around and see this from many different vantage points. The canyon is beautiful. It's pretty crazy, this is like in the middle of nowhere, Washington. We were driving for hours and hours of just like through grasslands, flatlands, and then we just showed up at this crazy waterfall and canyon. It's a really awesome spot and it's great for photography. You can camp here, it's a great place for the family, and definitely probably the coolest spot in Eastern Washington. For 42 is Cucumber Falls in Ohio Pile, Pennsylvania. And actually right across the street from this waterfall is an awesome natural water slide. So there's a lot of fun stuff to do in the area. But for Cucumber Falls, it is only 0.2 miles with 42 feet of elevation gain. You can go below the waterfall, behind the waterfall, or above the waterfall. It's awesome to see it from a bunch of vantage points. But beware, it is very slippery, so just make sure you are being careful when you're going behind the waterfall. Number 43 is Druid Arch in Canyonlands National Park. And this is actually not near the Moab entrance. This is near the Monticello entrance. So it's way further out there, but it's so worth it. This is one of the craziest places in the Utah desert. The arch looks like it's straight out of a Star Wars movie. We didn't have the best lighting conditions when we hiked it for sunrise, but it was such a fun hike. You kind of are just hiking through these narrows and there's a lot of route findings, so you definitely need to download the offline maps. 
It's a very fun hike. There's some scrambling at the end and it's just an all around really good adventurous day. This is in the Needles District of Canyonlands and this is a 10.4 mile round trip hike with 1,614 feet of elevation gain. Next up for 44 is back in Washington State Natural Bridges Cove and this is in Samuel Boardman State Park and this is just above the border of Oregon. It's not necessarily a hike, I guess you can walk around to the different vantage points and you can walk on top of the natural bridge. It's around a half mile if you do it all, but you can get a vantage point pretty close to the parking lot. In all of Samuel Borderman State Park, this is definitely my favorite spot, but I highly recommend taking all of the roadside stops because it is some of the most scenic coastline in the state. Number 45 is Glacier Point in Yosemite. And if you are able to get to the top Glacier Point parking lot, it's just a 0.6 mile hike with 167 feet of elevation gain. It's very close to the parking lot. You have awesome views of Yosemite Valley, Half Dome, a handful of waterfalls. You have great views of Vernal Falls and, and it's just an awesome place for sunset. The sun just lights up the entire valley. Number 46 is Horseshoe Bend. This is 1.4 miles with 137 feet of elevation gain. This is in Page, Arizona, and it is one of the most jaw-dropping places in the area. Pictures and videos don't do it justice of how massive this place is. It's an awesome stop, but just so you know, over the years, it has gotten extremely commercial. I've been here a handful of times, and every year I have gone, it gets a little bit more commercial to the point where typically you could just park and walk. Now there's an entrance station, a visitor center, paid parking, there's certain hours, so it was a little tough. We actually had a failed sunrise mission because of this, because it changes every single year. So just research it a little bit before you go. Number 47 is Whiskey Island Lake, and this is a 5.4 mile hike with 890 feet of elevation gain. This is in the High Uintas of Northern Utah. It's a crazy hike. I don't know how I found this on all trails because the road up to it is serious. You definitely need four wheel drive and high clearance on your vehicle. And you need to download the offline map because once you park, it's pretty much you just stop when you can't go any further and there's not really a trail. So you're pretty much just bushwhacking. But once you get up to the lake, it makes it all worth it. Got some really cool shots of Zach swimming across the lake to the island. Next up is 48, and this is Moon Caves in Cathedral Gorge State Park, Nevada. In my opinion, this is the coolest place in the entire state. I didn't hear about this until like two years ago. It's just some breathtaking desert, and it is just 0.3 miles with 62 feet of elevation gain. You have these awesome rock structures, and you can actually go into the rock structures, and there are caves, it's like slot canyons. It gets very, very skinny, so there are points where you're kind of squeezing your body through but it's a really fun place to just explore and kind of get lost in these crazy caves. Number 49 is the Cosmic Ashtray, and this is in Escalante, Utah. Any car can make it to this trailhead, but I would not recommend taking a nice car because it is a dirt road and it is a little bit gnarly, but pretty much any car can manage. It's an 8.3 mile round trip hike with 882 feet of elevation gain. This place is crazy. This is another one of those places where nothing will do it justice. It is massive. It is so much bigger than it looks and the sand inside of it is such a rich orange color. It's, it's a, one of the most unique places I've been in Utah.
Last up at number 50 is Bob Bear Trail in Strawberry, Arizona. This is 8.3 miles with 1,505 feet of elevation gain. This is another one of those hikes where you actually hike down first and then your return hike, you are hiking up. There's an awesome swimming bowl, a really cool waterfall. There's a few caves and the water is a crazy rich blue. Definitely bring a tube, definitely bring some goggles so you can go underwater and just kind of explore. You need a permit for this, but it's super easy to get. And this is just about one hour away from Sedona. So if you're going there for a trip, definitely would recommend taking the day and making it out here. And that is gonna wrap it up for this top 50 hikes in the United States. I really hope you enjoyed. If you are still here, thank you so much. And please, please, please like and subscribe for more. I make tons of hiking videos, travel videos, van life, and all things of the sort. So I hope you can stay around for some future videos. And if you use this as a bucket list or planning list for hiking, please let me know. I would love to hear what hikes you guys do and I will catch you on a future video. Thank you for watching.